Today we're doing a ballistic gel test with different types of hunting ammo and bands. Now I want to do a ballistic test because I've seen a few on YouTube and as a scientist uh, there's a few problems that I've noticed with them. Um, they all seem to use the same bands for different types of ammo and so what I've done is I've got a uh, been practicing with a few different um, types of ammunition and I've cut some bands that are suited to that ammunition and I'm going to be shooting those bands with the ammo that they're suited for and so that should hopefully be a realistic kind of hunting speed for that ammo to be traveling and I've cooked up some ballistic gel and we're gonna uh, we're gonna take some shots so this is the first video in a three-part series on doing some proper scientific tests with um, hunting uh, hunting slingshot setups this one we're doing some ballistic gelatin the next video I'm going to be shooting across a chronograph and the last video I'm going to cook up a ballistic pendulum and we're going to measure the kinetic energy uh, conferred to a target by each of the different types of ammo. So if you want to see those, hit the like and subscribe button and uh, look forward to those in the future. So one of my favorite things about slingshots from a kind of scientific point of view is that there's so much going on. So don't worry about this, uh, I'll, I'll talk through this. It's not particularly confusing. What we're talking about is how much energy does a moving object contain? And that is determined by this formula here. So basically we're talking about the amount of kinetic energy is equal to half of the mass times the velocity squared. So that means if it's big and it's heavy and it's moving quickly, then it has a lot of kinetic energy. And that, that's obvious, that makes sense. But one thing that's not particularly obvious is the thing that matters the most for increasing kinetic energy is the speed. So here we have uh, a calculation for two calculations for 10 millimeter lead. And what I've done is I've increased the speed by one sixth, and that will matter in a second. The point is, you take a 10 millimeter lead and you shoot it twice. If you increase the speed by a sixth, you're increasing the amount of energy by a third, which is a lot more, it's twice as much. However, if you take an 11 millimeter lead and you shoot it at the same speed as this first calculation here, an 11 millimeter lead is one sixth heavier than 10 millimeter lead. However, there is only a one sixth increase in energy. So the point is, is if you want to transfer more energy for your target, Speed is the thing that's going to increase that amount of energy quickest. Okay, so now we know that speed is very important. Let's look at a few things that can affect the speed of your shot. We've got the thickness of the bands, the taper of those bands, the length of your active band length, the mass of your ammo, and the elongation of those bands. So band thickness, generally thicker bands contract slower, but they contract slower with more force. So thick bands will shoot large ammo slowly, relatively speaking. Uh, tapered bands shoot fastest. That's, there's a whole, that's a whole level thing, but tapered bands are fastest. Now active band length, for those of you who don't know, is the bit of the band that is doing the stretching. So we've got the little bit at the end that is inside your clip or is tied around your foot. And the active band length is what goes up to uh, the knot to attach the band to the pouch. And so the active band length is relevant because the length of your draw and the active band length determine the elongation. So fastest possible shooting, you have thin bands, light ammo, tapered with a relatively short active band length to your draw length, and therefore you're increasing the elongation. So lots of stretch, small ammo, um, with tapered bands that are very thin, that's how you get the maximum amount of speed. But with thin bands, you can't shoot the heavy ammo. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Um, however, all of this, none of that matters if you can't actually hit your target. So the aim is to find some combination of these things that will allow you to shoot accurately and deliver the, the energy of your shot into the skull of whatever it is you're shooting. And one of the things that I found really affects accuracy is the amount of pinch force that you have to use. 
And pinch force is determined by how much you're stretching the bands and how thick those bands are. So today I've come up with the combination of these that works for me. And we'll go and we'll have a look at the swing shots that we're gonna be using today. Okay, here are the swing shots and the bands that I'm gonna be using today. We've got the Demon, and the Demon's gonna be shooting 30 to 15 taper, 0.95 precise gold, and the active band length is 230 millimeters. Then we have the Monster shooting shooting again 30 to 15 taper, this time 0.85 precise gold with an active band length of 225 millimeters. I have the Ninja, call it the Ninja XL. It's um, same as the, the Ninjas, but it's 100 mil fork tip to fork tip. And we're shooting 24 to 14 0.85 precise gold with an active band length of 185 millimeters. Then we have my personal favorite. We've got the Ninja and I'm shooting it with 25 to 15, 0.66, one point, uh, sorry, 0.66 GZK green with 185 millimeter active band length. And then finally, we have another Ninja with 25 to 15. This, is this time it's 0.54 millimeter GZK green with 180 millimeter active band length. The Demon, I'm going to be shooting half ounce. That's 14 gram. This is actually a fishing sinker, but it works just fine. With the Monster, we have 11 millimeter lead that we're going to be shooting. The Ninja XL, I'm going to be shooting 11 millimeter steel and 10 millimeter lead. Now these two types of ammunition have roughly the same mass. So I'm going to be shooting them with the same bands. The Ninja 95, I'm going to be shooting 9mm lead and 10mm steel. Again, these two types of ammo have roughly the same mass. The lead is maybe 0.2 grams heavier than the steel. And then finally, with the uh, 0.54 bands, we have 8mm steel. So each one of these slingshots was made by myself. If you would like any of them, I have an Etsy shop if you're abroad, or if you are in good old Aotearoa, you can uh, find me, find my stuff on Trade Me, or you can hit me up on the Facebook group, and the link's down in the description below. So these clips are filmed in 240 frames per second. And I did that so I could estimate the speeds that each of those shots was traveling. Um, so I divided the, the number of frames by my draw length. Plus, slow-mo is cool. Everyone likes slow-mo, right? So here are the results. Now you can see that my ballistic gelatin is um, a little bit more opaque than the stuff that you would buy, the fancy stuff. So I've labeled the shots and just real faintly right in the middle of the block there, you can just see 
just here the 8mm and the 10mm steel. So to take the measurements I poked a skewer down the, the channel that the shot passed through until the skewer touched the ball and then I marked it off with uh, a vivid and here you can see right at the top there we have the largest ammo and then we've got 11 millimeter lead 11 millimeter steel 10 millimeter lead 10 millimeter steel the 9 mil lead and the 8 mil steel and there are the relative distances but I'll put that into a graph to make it a little bit easier to see. So here's our results. I've put all of the information there. Heaps to talk about. Uh, perhaps to nobody's surprise, the 11mm lead being long drawn with some pretty heavy bands was going the fastest. It was also amongst the heaviest. And so it got um, the most penetration by quite a significant amount. Um, I was a little bit surprised by the 14mm lead. Um, I think even 0.95 bands cut to such a wide taper are not strong enough to sling such heavy ammo. Um, but we'll, we'll have to do some calculations to work out how much force was actually imparted upon that gel because I think that would still be a killing blow. And here we've got just the speeds in meters per second and the depth. And so you can see there's pretty remarkable correlation between the speeds and the depth. So it looks like my estimations of the speed must be pretty spot on. Um, I was a little bit surprised by the 8mm steel there, which uh, was significantly lower penetration co compared to what you might expect from its speed. So maybe that just goes to show. Who knows? Um, but otherwise, pretty happy and pretty much what I expected actually, um, apart from the 14mm lead. Um, I think maybe I'll try full butterflying that and see what we can do. Another thing that's interesting to me is the fact that the, the 9mm lead and the 10mm steel are both the same mass, however very very big difference, even though the speed is the same roughly, very very big difference in the amount of penetration that you're going to get. And even though the 11mm steel and the 10mm lead are broadly the same mass, you can see that the difference in penetration is significantly less. Well anyway, that's enough of what I think. Um, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. I'm keen to hear what the slingshot hive mind can come up with. Um, so drop a comment and I'll reply. And then we'll see where we go from there. Alright, catch you later.